I have a confession to make. I'm a geek. And I've always been a geek. I live my life with computers, smartphones, and tablets. I remember the first website I ever checked online. I got job offers on my blog. I learned teamwork on Wikipedia. I'm a geek. And as a geek, I went to medical school to become a medical geneticist. And surprisingly, my professors started telling me they didn't want to deal with the internet or social media because then they would have to deal with the information overload. And me, as a first-year medical student back then, had to tell them the truth. Everyone has to deal with information overload. But the solution is that we have to be better at filtering online. So I could say that because myself, I went through a learning curve of filtering online. And it started with browsing the web, checking the new content of my favorite medical blogs, journals, websites, every day. When I had 30 of these websites, I had to find a second solution. So all these resources send the information to me to one place. Then I had hundreds of these. And instead of just checking thousands of article titles every single day, I wanted to invest my time into something else, human intelligence. For the last years, I've been building medical social networks in my fields of interest. When I check what kind of articles these people shared, liked, commented on, I knew which ones I should read myself, because they filtered the web for me. Just like how I filtered the web for them, by sharing those articles I find interesting. And there was a point when I had such a huge online community in medicine that I wanted to use it for something new, for crowdsourcing clinical questions. And I knew in medicine it would be very tricky because others tried and failed. Conor O'Brien, the US television star, lost his job a few years ago, which meant that for some months he didn't have healthcare coverage. And when he had a medical question, of course he turned to his millions of Twitter followers. Who else? And he sent this message to them. I no longer have healthcare. Could someone show this to a dermatologist and get back to me? <laughs> this is a mole, nothing serious. But a US physician replied to him on Twitter, saying that, Conan, I'm a hematologist, not a dermatologist, but looking at that, I give you seven months. <laughs> Don't worry, that's a really long time. <laughs> so not just communication between patients and doctors is absolutely changing, but crowdsourcing in medicine only works if you know your communities. And I knew mine. I was a last year medical student back then, and we had a very special case Professors tried all the tests, nothing seemed to be working, and I was sitting there in my shy way, having my smartphone in my hand, having 20,000 medical followers on Twitter. I thought I should ask them this question. Strange case today in internal medicine rotation, 16-year-old boy with acute pancreatitis for the sixth time in his life. Any ideas? I received hundreds of responses in a few hours' time from professors, physicians, medical students, medical librarians, medical lawyers, patients, reporters, from all around the world. And by 3 a.m., we came up with one potential idea. I woke up at 6 a.m., went to the clinic, and at the end of the grand rounds, I came up with this idea as a shy medical student, and it was the final diagnosis. So I crowdsourced the diagnosis. I blogged about this. The story was featured by the New York Times, by Time magazine. Al Jazeera called me Dr. Twitter in a live show. What else? And they all describe how great it is that social media is the solution for this. And I had to tell them the solution was the fact that I knew my communities. I met those people in real conferences. We had been in contact for many years in a professional way. I knew those people, just like we do the same things in medicine. So over the years, I had this picture, this simplified picture in my mind. We have a lot of e-patients who would love to use the internet, social media in their health management. And we have a lot of medical professionals who are not that open, neither to e-patients nor to technology. There is a huge gap between them, which we have to fill. And I think there are two solutions for that. First, we, it's not enough anymore to curate medical information online. There are thousands of websites for that. But patients with chronic conditions, they will have the disease for 50 years. They will need newer and newer content in dynamic resources, which they can only find in social media. Therefore, social media must be curated. And that's what we do on Webicina. We curate the world's best social media resources in medical specialties and conditions in 20 languages for free for everyone. The second solution is we must include digital literacy in the medical curriculum. 
the only way to fill healthcare, the technology savvy professionals who can deal with e-patients, is to train them like that. For the last five years, I've been teaching medical students about the use of social media, disruptive technologies, smartphones, and the internet itself. And when I gave a talk about this at Stanford University last year, I received an email from a physician based in London that he would like to come to Hungary every week just to attend my course. That was a sign for me to create an online format. So last year, I launched the social media course, an online free course for everyone, containing 16 presentations, extended topics from the basics of internet, going through using Facebook blogs, YouTube, Wikipedia, virtual words in medicine and healthcare. And students are competing uh, for badges. There is gamification behind that. And now we are working on a board game so then students and their physicians could compete against each other with their digital knowledge. That's the only way to train physicians to be able to meet the expectations of e-patients. And in my new role as a medical futurist, I came across this very interesting image. It was published in a radio magazine in 1925, and they predicted that in 50 years' time, so by the 1970s, the practice of medicine would be something like this. The physician from his office could treat and diagnose the patient at her home through these radio wave machines. Well, almost 100 years passed, and we are still not there, fortunately. The practice of medicine must happen in real life. We have to see, smell, touch, know the patient. We have to have an established relationship based on trust. But after that, the use of technologies, social media, can be of huge help if used with strategy and design. I think that with modern tools, from social media resources to smartphone applications, even such a conservative field as medicine can be redesigned, but only with small steps through constant evaluation following the path of evidence-based medicine. And my role as a, as a medical futurist is to fill this gap by helping medical professionals and e-patients get closer to each other. So let's tweet in touch. Thank you.